With everything going on in New York, I have encountered a lot of this anti-gay rhetoric. They really come up with some of the worst arguments. They, of course, start with the whole religion and morality issue. That I won't even address specifically here. I already have other videos about those two topics and why they are utterly absurd. Usually I just mock people in a humorous way when they start talking about states condoning immorality, quoting the Bible, and all that nonsense. Then they will say gays have the same rights because they can marry, but they don't want to because they are attracted to people of the same sex. That's bullshit for multiple reasons. The obvious one being that some people have the right to marry the consenting adult of their choice, while others do not. Then, of course, gender isn't the simple binary thing people think. There are people with ambiguous genitalia, and those who have less obvious aspects of both sexes. For example, some people with a double X chromosome end up with testosterone as the dominant sex hormone. So, it's really not so simple. This, of course, brings them to the definition argument. However, it's usage that defines a word, and not etymology. Gay people are also able to get married in other parts of the world, so it would seem that people arguing that marriage should not be redefined are way too late. Then there is the religious freedom argument. That's crap, too, as these laws allow them to turn away gays and still keep their tax-exempt status. So they are getting a pretty good deal. If I had my way, they could continue being bigots as soon as they start paying taxes. Then of course there is the put it to a vote argument. That is also bullshit, because a majority should not be able to decide what rights a minority gets to have. That's the whole point of having rights. Any sort of tyranny by majority needs to be stopped. When that fails, they compare it to affirmative action. That argument is a non sequitur, though, even if it was valid, because our consistency has nothing to do with gay people being able to get married. However, I go on to defend affirmative action as something that is still needed. In my opinion, we will probably need to wait for at least all the baby boomers to retire before we get uh, bigotry to a low enough level to allow affirmative action to be phased out. There is one argument that is dumber than all others, though. I actually saw someone tell this lady on Facebook that she can't be objective about the New York gay marriage bill because she is gay. I shit you not. All you can do is make mocking analogies at that point. Kind of like this. So, Martin Luther King should have just done nothing because he can't be objective about civil rights. Christians in ancient Rome should just have accepted their fate since they couldn't be objective. I guess I should tell my wife to quit voting since women can't be objective about suffrage. You know, Let's just take this thing to its hyperbolic climax and tell the Jews at the Holocaust Museum that they can't be objective about Nazism. Honestly, grossly over-the-top ridicule is the only response to an argument so ludicrous that nobody with an ounce of sense could take it seriously. These bigots are some of the most breathtakingly stupid people you'll ever encounter. That really makes a lot of sense, though, when you think about it. Strangely, nobody used the what next argument where they compare gay relationships to pedophilia and bestiality. That used to be the go-to argument. I think that argument's absence, as well as some Republican support, really shows you how far things have come the last few years. With any luck, the bill in New York will pass before I even get this video posted.